What is up guys, Equers here, and today I want to talk about what happens to a reef tank when it's put under hypersaline conditions. Now, what is hypersalinity? Well, when we measure the specific gravity in natural seawater, it's generally accepted that it's around 1.025, and thus keeping a specific gravity of 1.025 will keep our coral, fish, and inverts happy. Anything lower and higher can have detrimental effects on coral and inverts. Remember, this is a very tight range of values. In fact, you only get about 0 .001 like points of wiggle room on the higher and lower side. So you'd be fine at around or about 1.024 to 1.026. Don't let this scare you though, it's really not that hard to keep and maintain these values. And this shouldn't be an issue if you do the bare minimum, unlike me. Now, where did I go wrong, you might ask? Well, it all starts with being lazy. When I do water changes and have to fill the brute trash can with RODI water, I also have to estimate how many cups of salt to add. So I'd estimate the amount of salt that I needed to put, and every time I'm wrong, I swear to God, I just can't get it right the first time. So if I went to 1.027 or even 1.028, I'd just shrug it off and just add the new water because I didn't want to wait to add RODI water to lower the salinity. Mind you, RODI water takes a long time to make. It takes like an hour or so just to make three to four gallons. So you're just gonna have to sit there and wait until you get what you want. Over time, shrugging off that small 0.003 to 0.004 difference, my salinity rose to about 1.033 to 1.035. Before we get to what happened, let me give you guys a couple of tips. Number one, always underestimate how much salt you will use rather than overestimate. It's always easier to add more salt than water, especially RODI. Number two, never shrug off anything that's above 1.026 and 1.024. When you account for evaporation, it's especially important to keep your water in that range. Number three, test the salinity in your main tank once in a while, just to make sure that the salinity is perfect and that it isn't out of whack in case you made any errors when you were filling the tank with new salt water. So what happened? Remember, this happened gradually over months. So I was thinking there was some other reason why the health of my tank was declining. The most apparent thing was that the anemones were kind of deflated and bleached. And I have a pretty good track record with anemones so it was weird to see them fighting for their lives. There were also some other corals that looked like they were just on their way out, and it was like they were only 20% alive. Also, when I added some corals, some corals instantly died, and I couldn't figure out why, but most corals actually survived, which is really surprising. I don't really acclimate corals because everyone keeps their tank at 1.025, but it was crazy that most corals I added were just, you know, chilling. I'm just chilling. Even though they probably had a gigantic shock in salinity. Most established corals didn't change, and it looked like business as usual, which is why it took so long to realize the issue. It seems like they adapted to the new salinity and the only change was that their growth was slowed. As when I reduced the salinity to 1.025, I noticed growth quickly increased. The crabs and fish didn't seem to be affected by this, and they were also business as usual, and displayed no noticeable signs of discomfort. They are probably affected if we're being real, but their behavior hasn't shown anything concerning. I did notice, however, a decline in the population of snails, mainly Astraea snails which caused a lot of hair algae to grow on the rocks, and it made the tank look really bad. And all I had to do was just buy some more snails, and they took care of the algae infestation in under a week. So let's talk about how to fix this situation. 
If your salinity ended up going over the course of weeks and months, it's best to get it down in at least a couple weeks to a month. Sudden changes in salinity is never good as the inhabitants have slowly adapted to these levels and going from upwards of 1.035 to 1.025 is a big swing that none of the residents in the tank would like. What I did perform was five gallon water changes and made sure the new water was at 1.025. That way, the water would slowly reach equilibrium at 1.025. And by doing small water changes over the course of about three weeks to a month, I slowly reduced the salinity to 1.025. And my residents didn't get any salinity shock because I lowered it gradually. So with most things in this hobby, if it took you a while to get where you're at, it should take you a while to get out. After I reduced my salinity, it looked like my tank just came back to life and I found out that all my corals started growing faster and encrusting my rocks, and the tank lived happily ever after. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. It helps a lot, and I'll see you in a bit.